Okay, my name is Michael Dexter, and I will be talking about User-Friendly Beehive, a survey of command line and GUI Beehive hypervisor management tools, and a whole bunch of development news. So first off, what is Beehive? It is a permissively licensed hypervisor developed on FreeBSD that has been ported to Mac OS, Lumos, and Linux in the form of Project Acorn. And it joins FreeBSD Jails and Zen on FreeBSD, and Lumos Zones and KVM on Lumos. So not to mention the fact that it coincides with uh, OpenZFS becoming very, very good and one terabyte larger hard drives arriving a few years ago. So together, those give us quite the trifecta of Beehive, OpenZFS, and rather efficient containers, which I'll touch on later. So as for why a permissively licensed hypervisor, well, at uh, the Meet BSD event in 2010 at Hacker Dojo, everyone didn't break into groups. They decided to have a full session on virtualization. And the conclusion was we need a hypervisor. There is no way to get around the licensing of the alternatives. And many of them, such as KQMU, have lots of baggage they've acquired over the years. And so it was, it was an opportunity to start fresh, especially with the relatively recent arrival of Intel you know, core, like core i7 and similar generation Halem CPUs with extended page tables and other support, uh, hardware support functions. And AMD actually led the, led the charge on some of those. So a small uh, programming note, I see there are about a few dozen people in the chat. I appreciate that and I'm totally happy to answer questions. The organizers encouraged speakers to pre-record these. And well, I personally like an audience and whoa, Nelly, there's a lot of news going on in virtualization space. So Broadcom is looking to buy VMware. There are, I guess, some final approvals that have to take place, but that's been breaking news, lots of uh, news on the re register and now Ars Technica. And I invite you to go check those out. So in the narratives, uh, it looks like they're thinking of a really rapid transition to a subscription model, AKA more expensive, perhaps deferring some costs over time, but probably for the sake of being expensive. And also a focus on the top 600 clients and customers. If that's you, great, although it might mean it's rather expensive to have that relationship. And I will not speculate, but there is a whole bunch of speculation going on about the future of ESS, ESXi, the free of charge hypervisor that I will say has become quite good and has a lovely web UI in seven and even a, an, an air quotes, you can't see my air quotes, update feature in which it lets you paste in the like patch URLs. <laughs> So it's like, okay, how about just click a button to update my entire system? No, you don't get that. You probably get that for a bunch of money. But um, so that's uh, that's a, 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 some, a space to watch. In other news, you may have noticed in the fall that that Hyper-V server uh, 2022 is not a thing. Uh, when they announced server 2022, uh, the standalone Hyper-V server formerly known as Core, uh, quietly vanished. So their product competing with ESXi free version is Hyper-V Server 2019. It is downloadable and they've pledged support for a decade. So it's not like you have to jump off that platform in a hurry, but uh, the writing's on the wall there. And they were very clear about a new, let's see, Azure Stack HCI replacement that has a free trial and ten dollars per physical core, core per month uh, i for one not prefer not pay that but maybe you do in other news zen is alive and well it's one of the granddaddies of of virtualization and uh people are pretty happy with uh, zen xcpng it's a it's a i believe fully open source version of zen what was zen server which i believe is still available and believe it or not, Zen works pretty well on FreeBSD. I'll touch on that later with a link to help you do that. But it's a thing. It, it, if you need like legacy BIOS, there it is. I've run Temple OS and some other rather strange things on it. So you get all your ZFS, you get all your FreeBSD monitoring and information retrieval from the system. It's, it's a thing. So Linux KVM is definitely 
doing great. Uh, it's if you if you're watching the narrative, IBM and Red Hat, well, IBM Red Hat are you know, focusing on OpenShift and Hubert and the sort of hybridization of containers and Kubernetes and virtualization. Great, cool, maybe that's for you. And the Proxmox virtual uh, environment appliance is quite cool and that has root on OpenZFS and it's hyper-focused, no pun intended, on being a solid alternative to VMware, uh, no more, no less. I do like that. And TrueNAS Scale, which is based on Linux, is exploring the same territory. It's containers with uh, uh, virtualization, with, of course, storage. So watch that space. Also in other news, uh, yeah, OpenBSD VMM BMD is moving along, along with the NetBSD hypervisors. I do not know the state of Zen on NetBSD. You might even get a better experience on FreeBSD at this point. It's a bit of a shift. And I will say NetBSD Zen treated me very, very well in the late oh, 2010s. It never hiccuped on me, and I ran my, my public-facing server on it. So who knows? Maybe we will hear from all of them at a, an upcoming BeehiveCon. So in close at home local news, Xhive, the port of Beehive to Apple and Mac OS is uh, struggling a bit on the fact that Apple has declared ton and tap devices needing to go. So I believe with all the excitement around WireGuard and the progress there, there might actually be the code they're missing because they've had to work around the exact same problem. So I hope those teams are working together. And uh, Project Acorn, a, an embedded sort of IoT auto-oriented hypervisor that's a bit of what appears to be a bit like Intel and the Linux Foundation's forking of Beehive, has just celebrated their four-year anniversary. And uh, wow, I went, went through the install process. It's about, a, like I say here, 25 to 50 step process. And you install Node and Python and Rust and push out to USB and declare board profile and I I was impressed with what they what uh, with the scope of it the documentation appears to be quite good but there's not a downloadable binary so it's not really covered here but that's one to watch and hopefully there's some code we can borrow back to beehive it's great to see all the familiar copyrights that's that's, that's beehive I'll touch on that a little later and Beckoff automation has uh, released a product based on FreeBSD and their automation technologies and it's largely upstream FreeBSD they're not either hiding that fact or proprietary, proprietarizing it. There's no secret sauce. I confirmed that with Corbin just this week. And uh, that's, uh, that's good news. It's, it's a great case of production use of Beehive. So in very close to home in uh, Beehive news. So as many of you know, maybe I am the single best and worst person to ask about this. I used the, I was the first external Beehive user and watched it be some napkin notes and a very fragile, rigid piece of software that I, I helped shepherd along, especially early on. Uh, but fast forward, uh, a recent BSD pizza meeting, I got quite an earful from users. Andrew Fresh conclusions based on them. So two people kind of cornered me, rightfully so, and are like, so, okay. We're kind of one's an open BSD user, and they're like, okay, so Beehive control controls virtual machines, right? Like you you set it up, you start it, you stop it. I'm like, eh, not 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 exactly. And so if I create a VM, it's like persistent, right? Eh, no, not really. And that tool is not what you think it is. And no, it's not equivalent to say the VMD commands on open BSD, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll just super quickly summarize some of the recent news. Um, John Baldwin and I have been organizing the Beehive call since about 2018 after a BSD can. Uh, and so those meetings take place every week. You are totally welcome to join the ping pong weekly between developer topics and production user topics. And that hybrid model has worked really well to, for example, dive into everything production users know about timekeeping, which is not a topic I went into this thinking would be a hot topic, but ooh, is it hot? So uh, anyone here is, and, and anyone using Beehive are definitely welcome to join the production user uh, meetings, but I will definitely not 
suggest anyone not attend developers, but you might not get the stage very prioritizedly. So there is a document linked from beehive.org that has all the minutes going back to 2018. And uh, that is by no means the perfect way to document it, but it's great for covering a meeting and allowing everyone to get their links in and then move on with the rest of their day. So check it out, slots there. And I see some regulars on IRC. Good to see you. Hello, Andrew. So uh, there is also on that document some fresh time counter performance. I looked at the time counter performance on, let's see, Beehive FreeBSD, Beehive uh, OmniOS, and Hyper-V, and Zen on FreeBSD, and ESXi. So I don't think you'll find exciting news anywhere else like that. Oh, yeah. So yeah, maybe time counters don't excite you. So looking back over the years, I wish I had been vocal about, hey, why don't we have an unambiguous ACPI push button? You're like, just push button, shut down a machine, just like you would on most modern hardware. And the plumbing is kind of sort of there, uh, but, uh, and it's making progress, but it was, it's a whole bunch of simple things like that that just I, I will, that have kind of cascaded into larger issues, and I'll touch on those. But in all of that, it's like, let's define some metrics of success. It's like, you know, there are some people who are very, very happy with uh, Beehive, and some who are very frustrated with it, especially with just trying to dive in and launch a, a sort of parlor trick VM as a demo and, you know, see if it's right for them. So... Uh, it's pretty clear Beehive has been like by developers for developers, and that's an, a limiting approach. So hey, let's 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 define some metrics. So you know we've had what twenty years of modern hypervisors and emulators on be it Windows, Mac, and Unix, and you name it. So let's see what some of those you know key features are for a checklist of what one should have, and what let's see what we have and don't have. So in this conversation, the hardware acceleration and assistance is pretty important. It, it, it's speedy, it's great. And the PT is for pass through. So pass through via PCI devices, via USB devices and that's, and disks. And that's been established for quite a while. Vert IO coincided with that hardware assistance and the basics are of course storage and networking. But if you look at the spec, there are a whole bunch of other Vert IO forms and it remains to be seen which ones are of high priority to people, but at least the basics are there. Uh, some amount of device emulation and Beehive hmm, scores reasonably well insofar as there's emulated Intel Ethernet, there's an AHCI disk controller, and you can sort of spin up most OSs uh, relatively easily. Uh, you often want to see something graphical. So the UEFI uh, BIOS firmware includes, say, VNC, but others include, say, RDP and SPICE and other protocols. But hey, you know, the basics are kind of there, and I'll go through how each one scores. Uh, legacy BIOS support that has been kind of a, not a focus of Beehive. Uh, UEFI CSM would be great, but it's been a bit lagging behind. Uh, naturally, some native run control. How do you start and stop a VM? Uh, documentation is, of course, important. And uh, just a clear picture of like what is supported as a guest OS and what is not. So then from there, there are obviously advanced features such as USB pass-through, GPU pass-through, Vertio graphics, and hot pluggable storage, and cold warm live migration. Uh, nesting, I'll talk about that insofar as uh, KVM and uh, VMware seem to be the top nestable hypervisors such that, well, Beehive was originally developed under a, a VMware product and it served it well. Uh, Hyper-V and Zen will, to some degree for development purposes, nest themselves, which is interesting. So just uh, that's useful to a developer, obviously. Um, but nesting has definitely not been a focus of Beehive and probably won't be because, hey, let the others do it. And it is ridiculously complex and fragile. And VMware had millions of dollars to make it happen. So good for them. Great. Uh, a management API is useful, be it REST, be it whatever your choice is, and of course a GUI, and a security containment, which I'll touch on a bit. And above all, the 15-minute rule. So 
I couldn't find many good links about this, but I remember a whole lot of discussion in the in the 2000s about how the MySQL database got this right. If you are a DBA and your boss is saying we we really don't like either the cost or the performance of you know solution foo, find me an alternative. MySQL did very very well with uh, letting people just pop it on their machine and connect to it and throw some data at it. And that's pretty important. So maybe uh, most open source software should should aspire to be that easy. I'm going to do a quick look at the IRC chat here because I have a live audience and I love you. OK, yeah, just, just tag my name if you want me to directly respond to something. So let's uh, look at rating Beehive. I've touched on many of the things it does. Uh, some are definite red check boxes, you know, legacy bio support won't be there. Uh, certain things like a pair of virtualized clock, which I think I had in the list, uh, is in a planning stage. You can check the minutes for that of the calls. And I, I give a yellow checkbox to the vert IO because, hey, often thinking back to, I don't know, parallels and all those desktop be it emulators way back would just let you have DHCP and make the networking magically work. So that's, uh, you know, something I'll touch on. Documentation, well, I, I curated the, week, the, the, the FAQ and a few people said, hey, throw it on the wiki. And there it went. And the, the, the community ran with it or didn't or you name it. So uh, that's uh, always a place to uh, look for opportunities to help. And naturally, uh, there needs to be some amount of guaranteeing that certain OS is run. Fortunately, Beehive is covering you know, Windows, Ubuntu Linux, and CentOS, and OpenBSD, and a bunch. So uh, if anything, it's time for a good survey of those. I do separate out Beehive and Lumos because, hey, they've, they've got native run control. They've, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that further, but there is the official way to run Beehive on, say, OmniOS, and there are new ones on the horizon. So to their credit, they, they found a way. Advanced features, well, UPB has been, the University Polytechnic of Bucharest has been working on USB pass-through for some time. Uh, yeah, I'll touch on the need for reviews of reviews, and GPU pass-through is essential to the Beckhoff products, project so, and product. So that is very actively developed. And you'll see a link on the minutes doc to Corvin's notes on how to get it up and running. So I, a few weeks ago, I just flat out asked him to document it. And I put it there for now. And I know someone on Twitter was asking about that. So uh, go check it out. And pluggable storage, that's actively being worked on. Thank you, John and Rob. Uh, there have been multi-year projects from UPB on you know, cold and warm and live migration. So uh, that definitely needs review. Nesting, not gonna happen, touched on that. Uh, management API, well, yep, yep, there are many forms of that. And security containment, we'll touch on that. So public service announcement, how can you help? So please, 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 there are countless reviews out there and over the years, many have died on the vine. So please take a look at, even if it's style, even if it's testing, you name it, uh, please, please, please take a look. And to DevRoot's question, yeah, and I, uh, legacy free was never a great term that I used early on as I was wrapping my head around this. But yeah, Beehive doesn't aim for BIOS, but the need keeps coming up for production users. So it would be great to have CSM support working and maybe upstream OVMF support will resolve that. So, uh, ba, 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 ba. yeah, uh, yeah, NetGraph. I wanted to throw this on this one of my last minute things. It's like, wait, I, I've got a little parlor trick test to spin up a VM with NetGraph. And NetGraph is an entire ecosystem and lifestyle that does many great things. And there have been you know, narratives that it's unstable, but it worked for me. And I, I'd love, I would love to have a NetGraph expert join some of the calls and just explain us what can and can't be done and how things should be all plugged together. It's it's quite exciting. It's it's one of those like best kept secrets, but you know, you got to get it in the hands of users. So a little about that. 
So touching on run control, well, so yeah, uh, Illumos, even Solar Solaris, Open Solaris before it, and Solaris before it had uh, their notion of zones, and later brought by brought into the mix by Joint was KVM support, and they just thought, okay, let's just use all our zone environment and drop virtual machines in there, so you get a choice of be it a Solaris zone, be it a Linux branded zone, a bit like uh, Compat Linux jails. I'm old, and I will say Compat Linux even if there are new names for it. And so naturally that's extended to Beehive. So you just, this is right out of their documentation, DLADM for the networking, and do your ZFS things, which would be very universal and familiar, and zone config, uh, dash zone name Debian, and set the brand to be Beehive and off you go. There is also Project Trident out of Joint and, and their new, new uh, owners and um, Project Propolis out of Oxide Computing. So do watch that space. And run control on FreeBSD. Well, FreeBSD has a position, I suppose, that they don't enforce policy very much. It's like, well, here are all the tools to do some amazing things, and we leave it to the reader to make a storage appliance, make a network appliance, make it a desktop, do whatever you please. We'll help you out to some degree along the way. But the closest thing that FreeBSD has is the VM run script.sh script. It's in examples and it's very much an example, <laughs> no more, no less as I see it. And so for what it's worth, one can download a VM image from release engineering from like ftp.freebsd.org. You can load the uh, VMM kernel module. You can run the script, uh, specify that image as a device, a storage device, give it a name at the end and boom, you'll have a, a VM. It will choke on networking if you haven't configured that, but here's the Five minute way to get Beehive running. It can be done, there it is. So naturally that leaves a bunch of opportunities and uh, I've been keeping track of these. So I put them in one place should I or someone like you want to dive in. Uh, for example, loading the VMM kernel module. You will not get off the ground of the hypervisor without that running. So I, I, I don't think it's an unreasonable idea to have the script either prompt to load it or otherwise, because otherwise it'll say, hey, not loaded, done fail, like, okay, so what do I have to do to a new user, especially? So basic networking, um, I've been setting up bridge and tap devices for like a decade now. I don't think a reasonable basic set would be unreasonable, but naturally you do have to ask what device to associate those with. And then of course, come sitting on your laptop with NAT, we'll get to that. Uh, funny NVMe emulation support, that should be super easy to, implement insofar as you need another flag to say, hey, this will be NVMe and just uh, add it to the mix. It does check for say a FreeBSD installer, looks for UFS, it does a few things. So that's um, sort of a, a reasonable early uh, check that no longer applies if you run a Debian or Windows or other uh, guest because hey, they are supported by its framework, but it does checks that are FreeBSD specific. One two line fix is to change the uh, host bridge PCI ID, PCI ID and um, Windows will work uh, graphically with uh, UEFI VNC support if you do that. Oh, some run, run control would be nice, a simple RC script that if you do set up your VM, off you can go. Uh, wi Fi friendliness. There are countless napkin note descriptions of how to use, be it. DHCP and NAT, and uh, what's the Linux router one that's for super popular with tiny devices? Um, uh, I have the oddball name, but it's a really tiny compact system with uh, all the tools crammed into one binary. I'm sure it'll be in the chat. Okay, so, and I've, I've ported VM run to OmniOS, and most of that's just comment out most of the FreeBSD checks, and it works. Uh, uh, maybe a config dump insofar as you set it up and you have it dump out your the command it would run. I found that to be the number one uh, feature of my VMRC back in the day. It's just it you can run VMRC with a template. It generates a command. You can throw away VMRC and go. So uh, then, yeah, let's just map out what is and is not supported as a guest. 
Okay, and a few things broader than that while we're at it. Uh, there are not a lot of policies on such things in FreeBSD, but the installer uses user FreeBSD disk for distribution sets. It might not be too unreasonable to use that for a stock VM image of the same release and then allow the user to push it other places as needed. Uh, it, release engineering, if you're listening, uh, there is no UnXZ on Windows. It'd be great if any VHD image for Windows would be zip in, in, uh, compressed rather than uh, XZ compressed. Just a simple little change. Uh, and to the question in chat, I mean to dump what uh, VM run would execute as a beehive command so you can incorporate that elsewhere because it does a whole lot of scaffolding and preparation and such, which is great, but uh, you might want to slip that in elsewhere to your own system. So again, it's under examples. It gives you an example run script. Uh, so Hyper-V has second generation virtual machines that have like UEFI and such. It would be great if there were FreeBSD stock VHDX images in addition to VHD images. And users don't typically want to convert images. And I don't even know if they're convertible. I assume they are. Anyway, or user local. Yep. Great. Uh, any ideas, fair game. So much more controversially, uh, it, oh, I meant to do a package install and see how big they are, but OpenBSD, DHCPD, and Tmux are super useful tools that are not very big. I, you know, install Tmux on every single system such that maybe I'm not alone in wanting that in base, but hey, that's a whole different conversation, perhaps with a hallway track. Uh, if you look at the doc, the, the the meeting minutes, I did some little performance testing and I hope made an okay argument for an if config dash Q, a bit like like any test in the test command or what is it, left bracket or um, trying to think of another Q, uh, KLD stat dash Q. And there are other forms of quiet mode that will just check if something exists, nothing more, nothing less. So on top of that comes um, perhaps in the super controversial include a process supervisor like Daemon Tools, S6, or Run It. Uh, that's a whole different conversation, but it's come up a bunch of times on the weekly meetings. And Jan, hey, hats off to you. He's, he has a, uh, also known as Crest, uh, he has an S6-based framework that will hopefully be shareable to the public. It's, it handles a few little topics I'll touch on. So I believe in upstream. I think, hey, FreeBSD is remarkably capable out of the box. It is stunningly capable. It is, it is powerful. So to that end, uh, this last few months, I've produced the Imagine script, which takes, for my purposes, weekly snapshot VM images and configures them. It does quite a few things. It like sets networking, it sets uh, noisy output on boot, debug, et cetera. Um, but also it will generate a VMDK. It will ask you to splat it out to a hardware device. So I take my USB SATA adapter, put a removable drive to it, splat it down there, resize it. It's ready to boot on say a Zen host, et cetera. So it's got serial enabled and a whole bunch of flags. Take a look, enjoy, steal whatever you want, go for it. And as I touched on earlier, I really want you to try Zen. I have the Xenomorph script, which just quickly installs the packages you want, sets the bootloader options, and it is included in Imagine. I don't have a fancy GitHub alias link between the two. There's a way to do that, but no, I really don't want to figure it out. So I just copy it over there. It's the same script. Maybe one of the two will vanish, but more Xenomorph will, as a library will end up in Imagine. And yes, there is the daemon process supervisor. Ah, I, I'll see what it does and doesn't do. And if you have a great use of daemon, shoot it on over. So all that said, I mean, time counters aren't excited to too many people, but um, yeah, it's been a quite the journey, but don't despair. We are at a huge crossroads and milestone. And it's subtle stuff, but uh, in FreeBSD 13.1, John's wonderful configuration file work has landed. So what you can do is generate a configuration file and launch it with beehive-k and specify the file, and it just draws from there. Now, at the same time, 
hmm, somewhat orthogonally, uh, jl.conf.d has arrived. And I believe the last speaker, Antoinet, is to thank for in part for that. And what it does is let you have a jl.conf file drop into a .d directory in Etsy, and the host will just launch the ones it finds. And maybe the, I believe there's some criteria of which to include or avoid. Maybe that's an rc.conf. That's a lovely little step forward. That's not a decade or two overdue, but very, very cool. So take a look at beehive, uh, the beehive underscore config manual page. Uh, the key things you need to know <laughs> are include the, the option flag dash o config dot dump equals one, which will spit out config and nothing more, just, just spits it out like I proposed with VM run. Then it will include that dump as a, as a parameter. So it's not helpful to like run beehive.k without removing that so because it will just dump probably dump again uh so i found that you can just do a grep dash v to ignore that string and no problem you get a working config file and a bootable vm so it is a lowest common denominator serializable format it is not json it is not yaml it is not the vmware xml which is rather inspiring it is the foundation for all of those so if you want to speak those Go for it. Uh, that was a little controversial early on, but hey, uh, it I I am pretty sure it solved lots of potential problems and uh, is a taste of what the future looks like. This is pretty much what's been holding up great libvirt support on FreeBSD. I'll touch on libvirt soon, and uh, a lot of the solutions have arguably waited on this. So, all of that said. <laughs> Let's run through those options as promised in the title of this talk. So there is a graveyard uh, and I'm included on it and proudly so. So Chives, Petite Cloud, uh, IOHive, VMRC, which I do believe people are still using production, but it's all shell based. So if you move from like old OpenBSD to new OpenBSD, you change like one character in the, the template for the version number, it should work. It's like, it's just, it's shell, love it. Um, and Beehive RC, which is fascinating insofar as it it seems to live in the port. There isn't like an external source. It's like, oh, do I have a typo? Uh, uh, no, for so yeah, uh, someone mentioned there's maybe a four, but uh, no, I do mean either it's a graveyard or feature frozen. Like VMRC is feature frozen. I yeah, I might answer some questions, but but based on what I just said about configuration file, a completely rethink needs to be done. So I grabbed some text, some syntax from Beehive RC, and it relies on Tmux, which is great. I'm like, cool, sweet. Too bad it's not in base, but that, that's cool. But the uh, VM stoppage is relying on killing the Tmux session. So I don't know if that's the best way to do it. Uh, that's a little scary. That's kind of like, hey, YOLO. <laughs> I think I'll touch on that later. But just uh, the, no, shutting down a VM is. Uh, not that, that simple. So moving on. Uh, CBSD and Clone OS. Uh, wow, busy. Uh, what is it? Telegram channel and active, and it is an ecosystem. Here's a screenshot of boom, once I had it running, it was very curses based, obviously. And you can find the links there. Uh, Clono seems to be in maintenance mode as it transitions to be closer, closer to the upstream project that is a GUI for it. So that's kind of exciting. It is in ports and packages, and it's a beast. It's, it does lots and lots of things, and it launches with a configuration question script that asks you countless things. But fortunately, like OpenBSD for what it's worth, you can hit enter, enter, enter for most of them, and it'll give you, in theory, a working system. Do be sure to reboot, and uh, it, it did its thing. Um, bah, bah, bah. It was... Uh, Promising. I mean, it would it would take some really time to invest, but I think there's some good reward there. But for me, I got it installed, but didn't get a VM VM up and running. It simply complained about the that ISO string and just wouldn't let me change it. And maybe that was a problem. But I moved on. I hope to return back to it. Runhive.app. That is the domain name, and it's on GitHub, kind of sorta. Yeah. So it it's pretty. It's got this great website. And it's active. There's some recent commitments. And I do see IRC is uh, pretty quiet. I think it's still me and the, the channel manager. So I wasn't really sure how to get started with it. But 
it's worth a peek at GitHub. We can do that maybe later, but it was not super clear how to jump into that. Similarly, bvcp, beehive.impulse.net, beautiful website. There's a website, very exciting, very reactive. Um, it's a very attractive GUI and it is uh, completely proprietary. If you go into GitHub, you will find binaries for installation and there are signs of active development. And I did get it up and running as a GUI and framework in 15 minutes, but once I logged in, I couldn't make too much sense of it, but hey, blame me, blame me as the user, go for it, no problem. But do check it out. Rather active for years now is FreeNAS TrueNAS, now TrueNAS Core. And it's got, it, it you know, has all the storage benefits of TrueNAS, which is fantastic. It's pretty much the world's number one storage OS. And uh, it will cover you know, key operating systems as a guest. It does reasonably well, but it's super integrated into TrueNAS. So the middleware determines everything. And so if I jump in and say, hey, just give me an NVMe device and a raw device, it's like, no, you can't do that. I'm like, well, Beehive can, but it can't. So I've been actually running multi-week data recovery operations with like a Windows VM and disks passed directly into it, totally at the command line, no problem. So uh, Beehive is not to blame for any TrueNAS Beehive shortcoming. So we'll touch on that a little later. And uh, Libvirt, I'm not sure if you've sat down on like a Linux system, tried virtual machine manager, but uh, bless his heart, Roman has been updating a client and it truly passed the 15 minute test. I sat down, installed it on a client, I on a, on a graphical laptop and had the hypervisor running on a lab machine across the room and over SSH controlled it. And boom, you can see from there, I had a, that off the shelf VM image working. You can get the details about the free uh, FreeBSD support at and Beehive support at uh, beehive.html over at libvirt.org. And uh, that is truly where we want to see Beehive config move forward because libvirt is so graphical that whatever what happens under the hood is you know not something you have to worry about and it, it could be quite the uh, quite the harmony but the developer is uh, hoping to escape uh, their country. So it might be a while before they're able to help, but if you know Python and G shell uh, and Beehive ideally, uh, maybe there's an opportunity. It might not be too big a project to jump in to get those sort of aligned and brought into the current. So uh, small caveat, quite a few projects use libvirt. Right? It's like you see a libvirt package on it, Proxmox or, or TrueNAS or you name it, but it's not the libvirt you and I know. It's just their internal uh, housekeeping, and you don't just aim virtual machine manager client at it. You you let it do its thing. So keep that in mind. And I did try libvirt D on FreeBSD Zen. It installed no problem, but is missing like lock files and such for Zen. I suspect that might be a super easy fix, like crazy easy. So uh, that would warrant some attention. And I hope one of you can jump in. So let's see, honorable mention, QBSD inspired by the Cubes operating system. It's a wrapper for JL and Beehive. And I looked at the GitHub repo and there's like lots of user land tree binaries and goodies. And I installed it, no problem. And then it threw this uh, simple shell error, which I was not in the mood to go chase down. So uh, that, that's one to watch. If even if they produce a new idea for someone else, that's cool. I respect that. Hey, people have been obviously obviously been trying to crack this nut from many different directions for many years. So hey, take a look. So honorable mention Project Acorn. So yeah, I, I looked at their syntax examples on their site, and it's like, wait a minute, this is a Beehive system. I know Beehive. I'm, yeah, you look at the, from the copyrights on up, it's like there's a whole bunch of familiar stuff and not so familiar, familiar stuff. So it's totally worth looking at because, hey, if they've solved some problems, you know, we'd want to address. Obviously, they have OMB, OVMF support, which is another build of uh, the Tiano, Tiano Core UFI firmware. There it is. Let's take a look. 
So as was touched on in the last talk, hey, the winner is VM Beehive. It's, I don't know, it has like 900 contributions. It's actively maintained. It's available as a port. It, it's probably dependency free embracing the infrastructure of FreeBSD. So I hats off to that. The documentation is pretty good. You know, it's quick to set up. Go for it. That's cool. That's, uh, I don't know if they're looking at the new config file work, but hey, this is sort of the state of the art. I won't dive into it, but it's super well covered. And Anthony kindly covered that in the last talk. So still, here we are with like a whole bunch of like 20 to 80% ready solutions, some arguably further along, but less feature rich. And like, what, 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 what's the hangup? So this should be a solved problem. Um, without question, there are, Beehive production users. And, uh, I suggest you check out Jason Tubner's talk about his work in Australia. That's a perfect use case. It's brilliant. It runs a mix of OpenBSD for VPN work and Windows for printer supply level checking. Great. Each thing does what it does well. I love it. There's a great talk out there from BeehiveCon. Now, there will always be the complexity pendulum. It's like, well, I showed how with like, one flag and a name you can use VM run to launch a stock VM. So all the complexity is hidden in VM run.sh. Well, if you want to do that recovery with like 20 disks pass through it automatically, you squint and it looks a lot like the beehive command itself because they're kind of mapping one to the other. It's like, well, you could do this directly in beehive at the command line rather than using the wrapper. So there's that. Uh, Beehive config took time to get right. And that man, manual page I, I listed, if you look for exactly that text for man beehive underscore config, it's thorough. John did a great work. If you're listening, great work, John. Big nice on IRC. And so features are landing, some rapidly, some not so much. One of the most pleasant surprises was Corbin's GPU work, pass through work for his day job. So it takes a J job and a motivation like that to just make it happen. So that's going great. Yeah, and with those features landing, there's like landing a VM that we saw that YOLO shutdown from uh, Beehive RC, was it? So yeah, a virtual machine's a bit like an airplane. If you point an airplane down a long enough runway and go fast enough, it will pop off the ground on its own thanks to lift. But landing that airplane is eh, not so, so easy. Now, uh, I would argue, it takes a, a multi-step process to say, hey, okay, if you can shut down from within a VM, great. Um, if uh, touch on that here, uh, you know, a developer is like, yeah, just log in, shut it down. If it's crashed, vaporize it, no problem. Like, well, hold on. What if you, you do need a super clean shutdown? So you hopefully throw an ACPI command to it and wait and have metrics of, you know, verifying the state of that. And keep in mind, it might be a custom machine you have no insights into, no console on. So you just have to like trust that it shuts down cleanly and then be increasingly firm with various uh, timeouts on, well, at what point do we just vaporize it? Because we know it's not going to go any further and maybe it is shut down. We don't know it. So that's uh, a little more complex than just pulling the rug out of a TMUX session. <laughs> so those are some, you know, hints on production cloud workflows where you want to like, delicately handle client data so they don't get a phone call that's like, well, why is the database corrupt, corrupt after what you said was a clean reboot? Uh, okay. So, yeah. And, oh, Jan has beat up on me for like P kill my VM name. It's like, well, there are countless opportunities for race conditions and you really want to keep track with be it daemon, be it daemon tools, be it S6, and just keep track of that potentially changing PID as opposed to just, you know, shooting into the dark and hoping the right thing happens. And there are security concerns in the wild. You know, beehive load is awesome for development. You can even point it at a directory containing the bootloader and then the OS is held on a different disk with no kernel and awesome, awesome, awesome. However, any of that boot code, like fourth or whatever, you know, Lua, I guess, is arriving and whatever Grub does, it's like, hey, that, that could be hostile and just wipe out your host OS system. So you really don't want to be too liberal on that. And I encourage you to check out Theodorette's comment on x86 virtualization. It's, it's, uh, I recall the phrase, what are you smoking? So maybe they'll help you find it. And hey, 
well, hats off to the Illumos folks. They've been containing it from almost day one, perhaps. It's like I, I do run uh, Beehive on the command line using the Beehive binary and point at the firmware and do that on on OmniOS. However, there is their official way. So it's all good. And I consider that essential to debugging issues. I mean, frameworks have bugs. And I recall someone being mighty unhappy that VM Beehive didn't support their, their ISO. Well, it was somehow treating it like a hard drive and it was just the wrong emulation or for IO to do it. Well, it's not Beehive's fault. Moving on about containment. Do not try it on Linux. Uh, yeah, so Linux containment's about like partitioning and separation, not really security, not really performance, not a, really a whole bunch of things. So people have tried it. I see on the Proxmox forums, like, hey, can I throw it in a container? Because hey, Proxmox does both LXC and, and KVM. When they're like, ah, performance issues. And you can look at the history of virtual machines escapes. And granted, containing a hypervisor is not always going to be perfect. There will be some issues, some escapes, some things, but hey, every precaution helps. Uh, so yeah, uh, there's a question on IRC and that's exactly what I'm getting to. So yes, to answer your question, yes, I'm talking about jailing beehive. So um, I am having this conversation right here because of FreeBSD jail. You can see my other talks about how uh, RPM hell got me here. It's like, nope, this, approach is flawed. We need to separate things out and install like binaries in one place. Uh, it looks like I'll be talking more about that, how to do thin jails uh, in the future. And you can check out on GitHub my um, Occam BSD script, which is very much about slim svelte jails. I totally get the three host problem. It's like if you have a virtualization host and then a jail that's an entire OS needing updating, and then the guest OS is like, oh, now I have three things to worry about. So I, I, I get that. And there are a bunch of napkin note, I'm grateful for it, tutorials on jailing Beehive, but none are quite complete or security oriented or you name it. So um, I'm, I'm spending my time there right now. And again, this all lands in, in harmony with the config format and uh, jail.conf.d. So maybe some of you will see where I'm headed with this. So if you're in a jail and you're running like literally just a beehive process, you can do pkill beehive pretty safely because it's not going to be reaching the host. And uh, Crest, I'll go with his nickname, Crest pointed out, hey, you know, you can inside a jail prevent processes from forking. Like, okay, well, let's add, you know, just start adding all these security tools one by one. And you do need to expose some amount of host devices like a VM's tap device or the VMM entries but you can do it pretty selectively. And in time, hopefully this will end up as like beehive.j and use transparently like on, <laughs> like on Illumos, just say, hey, I'd rather jail this today. Um, so I'm looking at that. But what's cool there is that it opens up the entire jail ecosystem to beehive. And for those who have used you know, free NAS, true NAS plugins and jails for a decade, that's a much more mature ecosystem in TrueNAS than the Beehive infrastructure. So you get that right and you can have it turnkey in an instant and you know, run easy jail to run virtual machines and all your favorite tools, be it best deal, be it, you name it. So I have posted this morning a, a new GitHub project, Jailhive, and it is absolutely a proof of concept work in progress. But I've done the hard part of grabbing all the utilities and the essential files and the loader files to get Beehive booting. I can't get a tap device to work for the life of me. And thank you, Daniel, for helping me out with like some ideas there. I think it's working on his system, but not mine. So hey, uh, jail experts, which I I've obviously not been diving into jail this last few years. I'm totally open to help there. but. Take a peek at it. It's linked right there. It's fresh waiting for your feedback, comments, questions, concerns, you name it. So a few quick thank yous. Hey, thank you, Crest. Thank you, Daniel. They've been regulars on the Beehive calls. And of course, uh, John and Patrick and Rob and Mark Johnson and others who have just been you know, keeping Beehive alive and well and providing reviews. And thank you, John, for producing a fix during a call to an issue that's bugged me for years, which is if you quickly Let's see, it was, if you quickly just 
Roy and relaunch a VM in a script, just for like a you know, quick iteration, it would give a real obscure error because it wasn't fully cleaning up. So you did a like four line patch during a call and it cleaned it up. And I think it's getting in there. Whoa. Okay, and there are a bunch of links in IRC. And of course, Dan and the team for working on this conference. So one more thing, just while I've got you, I haven't done too ridiculous today. I'm out, I'm out. we know that. So I'm showing a picture of a Dell Enterprise iDRAC interface. And that's available on like a 720 on up and variations and Keypoint Enterprise, which gives you an HTML5 console. You just hop in and look at a shell and virtual media through HTML by through a browser. So you can like upload. In this case, I tried a hello system CD. It didn't like it. It rebooted, but I didn't dig further into it. But I use this all the time for like a mem test for a TrueNAS installation for you name it. They get it right. Um, each other vendor gets it right to some degree. And naturally it's not perfect, but hey, it's, it's really good during a pandemic. So I am curious, given that Beehive has the UEFI VNC interface, and there are things like no VNC. Could we maybe add some features to that to have like a virtual keyboard, a little virtual media, and all the goodies to have the VMC framework act as a bit of an IPMI to manage virtual machines. Much of the plumbing's there. No VNC is MPL, so it's a pretty friendly license in these circles. And yeah, you'd need a little power control, just like on IPMI to start things up, start, stop them, et cetera. And then some hooks in the OS to take it from there on say reboot. But uh, maybe, you know, virtual machine management could be that simple and key point familiar to your users. If they spend their days just in a data center staring at IPMI, well, it's like, okay, we'll just treat the virtual machines like the physical machine. So that said, thank you everybody. This has been great. Uh, I am totally open for questions here on Twitter and the social channel, you name it. Um, you can find me pretty easily on most platforms with Michael Dexter. I don't know how that worked out, but that was cool. Uh, you can email me and you are totally welcome to join one of the weekly calls, either developer or, or production user. But if you are just a user listening in, hey, listen in and you know, flip in your questions. Any questions right here and now? I have a comment. We can have nice things. Yes. Cool. Well, how about I will see you on the social channel and I wish you a great remainder of the conference.